Hey folks, Jeff Roberts here at the Salado Wildlife Education Center. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of our Habitat videos, where today I want to talk about some of the neat wildlife that inhabit Kentucky's woodland habitats, a very specific group of what many people would consider mysterious, intriguing, maybe even spooky group of birds. That would be the owls. In Kentucky, we have four different species of owls that we're going to take a look at momentarily. These are birds that are equipped and designed and built to thrive and survive in Kentucky's woodland habitats by their adaptations. Adaptations are things that help animals to survive better. Let's take a look at and talk about a couple of these adaptations. Number one, excellent eyesight. Owls have very good eyesight. They can see much further and much clearer than we can. And most importantly, owls are mostly nocturnal. That means that they are doing most of their business when it's dark outside. So they have eyes that are specially designed to allow them to see better in low light conditions. Generally speaking, the bigger that your eyes are, the more light that they let in that would allow you to see better in low light conditions. So generally speaking, owls have very large, especially relative to body size, owls have very large eyes that allow them to see better in low light conditions when they are hunting. Now owls belong to a special group of birds known as raptors or birds of prey. So they are actually hunting, catching, and eating other animals. And therefore a lot of their adaptations lend toward hunting when it's dark outside. Another neat adaptation has to do with owl feathers. So let's take a look at something. Let's use our imagination for a moment and pretend that we are looking at a giant, very large owl feather. What we would notice if we zoom in on one edge of this feather, we would see comb-like structures. These are very special that owls have. These structures allow these feathers and collectively feathers on a wing to pass through air particles almost silently. You see the air is actually made of particles. So when things pass through the air, they create turbulence. And when turbulence is created, it usually makes a sound. Like the flapping of most bird wings is gonna create a whoosh, whoosh, whoosh sound. Well, when owls fly, they are able to do it almost silently because of these special structures on their feathers. So let's take a look at an actual wing, an honest to goodness owl wing. What we're gonna see here, if we look closely, are those structures, those comb-like structures that allow these feathers and collectively this wing to flap through the air almost silently. What is the purpose of that? Well, hunting in the dark is hard enough as it is. So if you are an owl, you want to be designed and built that allows you to be as effective as possible when hunting after the dark. So this allows owls to be sneaky and stealthy. It allows them to swoop down on their otherwise unsuspecting prey and makes them just that much more effective at hunting in low light conditions when hunting is difficult as it is. So that is a really neat adaptation that owls have. When we're talking about the owls in Kentucky, I mentioned we have four species. We do have four species that are called resident owls. That means they never leave, they don't migrate. Those are, we're gonna go from smallest to biggest. The Eastern Screech Owl. The Barn Owl. The Bard Owl, B-A-R-R-E-D, Bard Owl, and the Great Horned Owl. Now, I'm sure that a lot of these owls look familiar to you because most people are somewhat familiar. Even if you didn't know what kind of species you were looking at, you've probably seen an owl on TV or in a movie. Maybe you've seen an owl in real life. Uh, but these are, the, these are the ones we're gonna focus on. I do want to say barn owls are uncommon in Kentucky. We do have them. They are native, uh, but they prefer more open agricultural type habitats. They're not what we would call a true woodland species. So we're really not going to focus on them. We're going to focus on these three species because these three species, the Eastern Screech Owl, the Barred Owl, and the Great Horned Owl are absolutely woodland species and they are designed to survive and thrive in woodland habitats. They're doing most of their hunting in woodland settings, so the owls are eating a whole lot 
of mammals of different sizes because we do have different sized owls and we're going to talk about that more in just a moment. But they're eating a lot of mammals that also happen in those woodland habitats. And all of our owls, including the barn owl, but especially the woodland owls, are all cavity nesters. So they are going to find either a natural cavity, they're not going to do any of the excavating themselves, but they're going to find a natural cavity, or in the case of a smaller species of owl, they might find an old woodpecker hole and use that. But they are cavity nesters, which means, as you would expect, they spend a whole lot of time in woodland habitats and on wood edges. So what I'd like us to do, I'm going to give you a moment to look over these, these pictures one more time. I'm going to grab a live owl for you to get a closer look at. Okay, so what I have now with me in the flesh and in the feather is a live example of an owl. Uh, based on the pictures you were just looking at, some of you might have put, the, put it together in your mind that this is an eastern screech owl, and you would absolutely be correct. This small owl is the eastern screech owl. A lot of times people will see her, and based on her size, they will think that she's a baby owl, or maybe a baby great horned owl, but actually she's full grown at this size. This is as big as she's ever going to get. But don't let that small size fool you because eastern screech owls, even though they're small, they're very impressive little predators. Uh, we mentioned that owls are catching and eating other animals. Eastern screech owls mostly, at this size, are catching and eating large insects, large bugs, and small rodents. So they, if you want to think of it this way, they take the night shift of pest control, which is why it's so important that we have our owls in our woodland habitats doing the important job that they have. Now, speaking of adaptations that we've been talking about, we're going to take a look here at another neat way that our owls, including the eastern screech owl, survive and thrive in those woodland habitats. Now, if you are an owl, an eastern screech owl in this case, as you would imagine, you are going to be spending a lot of time in or near trees. Again, cavity nesters, they're going to raise their young in those cavities. They're going, to, they're going to spend time in the cavities when the weather's lousy, or they're going to spend time perched in those trees while they're hunting. You can see that she has excellent camouflage. In fact, when you look at her closely right up against this tree, it might be difficult if you squinted your eyes for you to even see her up against that tree. So blending in with their surroundings is another neat thing that allows them to do so well in our woodland habitats. Now, the neat thing about the eastern screech owl and kind of the reason I wanted to show her to you is that they can be found in a lot of neighborhoods, believe it or not. If you've got an older neighborhood with some mature trees in it, they need those woods for the reasons we've discussed, you could have eastern screech owls living in your very own backyard or in your neighborhood. So even though owls are mostly nocturnal, you can occasionally see them in the morning or in the evenings. Next time you're out, whether it's in your neighborhood, in your very own backyard, or your nearest patch of woods, you know, keep those eyes peeled, listen for those owls. A lot of times you're more likely to hear an owl than you are to see an owl. And uh, if you just are observant, you might just be surprised at how many woodland creatures like Kentucky's owls you might be able to see or hear for yourself. Thank you all for tuning in.